Hello, welcome to Monday. It is Monday and you are watching SPP, the show. This is the big show, the amazing show, the graciously outstanding show, whatever you want to call it. But I'm here and uh, welcome. Uh, this is our 95th show, if I can say that. I guess I can say that. Um, to celebrate that, let's take a look back. Let's, uh, let's take a moment to go back in time and, and see what it was like for our, our very first episode. Um, so on our very first episode, oh, there it is right there. Yes. If you remember back, let's see, this was a, uh, oh gosh, what, what day was this? I need to pull it out a little bit more. I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> it, it, I can't see it right now, and I'm not sure why, but it was March 27th. Oh, there it is. Streamed live on March 27th, 2020. Now, a little history here. So March 25th, 2020, John Krasinski put out a, uh, a note to the Twitterverse. I was not aware of this. He asked his fans to send him some good news, March 25th. I was not aware. March 27th, our first episode aired. And on March 29th, John Krasinski did his first show. So our show actually predates John Krasinski, but not by impulse. I'll say that. His impulse was before my impulse. And uh, just to belabor the point at home, he came out with his very, very special holiday edition just today so our 95th episode and his ninth episode same day so enjoy that little factoid um john you still haven't been on my show but that's okay i'll live anyway it's monday and we're here in the pub as uh we often are on our mondays and I'm, I'm having myself a, a cold, a cold uh, creature comfort here. It's delicious. It's delightful. Thank you for watching. I want to thank everybody for watching as much as they have and supporting our efforts here. Uh, I, I love the fact that I get to sit with people and talk to them about their interests and hobbies and performance and everything that they do. And today, I have a very special guest. He's been on our show before. But I wanted to bring it back because uh, he had a bit of news that he announced today. Uh, and I'm very excited for him to tell me about it and actually uh, share the news with us. His own good news. And, and John, are you listening? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ryan Schmidt. Hey, Chris. Hey, Ryan. How you doing? Hey. I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me back on here. Hey, no problem. No problem at all. Um, how it's been a while. I think I, I think you were on our fiftieth episode. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. 40, Forty-five whole. Uh... Forty. Yeah. <laughs> Forty-five whole episodes ago, <laughs> and uh, we've come a long way. Uh, last Monday, the first uh, vaccines arrived. By FedEx in cities across the nation, I think my wife actually got the vaccine Saturday. Oh wow! Uh, because she's a medical professional, and I guess some of us maybe do the vaccine at some point in time. I'm not really sure when. Uh, we don't really count as much as the medical professionals. Of Did course, she get one of those "I'm vaccinated" stickers? Uh, I'm not sure if she did or not. I know she posted on social media everywhere okay, uh, good. stating that she was vaccinated. But uh, other than that, no, no. But very proud of her. Yeah, um, and, absolutely. And how about yourself? How, how have you been doing? I'm doing, doing great. i um, been working in the office downtown. Uh, that's where the last episode, episode 45, was filmed. Uh, I've been working in the Bowen Law Group uh, office been it's we've adjusted to the new normal of being lawyers during a pandemic so there's a lot of zoom hearings and phone call hearings and weirdness that would never happen before before now and it's just one one more example of everybody kind of getting used to our new normal that's that's wild that's wild so yeah you guys are you're not doing any like in-person meetings with any of your clients 
we're not doing our, our meetings with clients are all on the phone, all via Zoom, but we do have a handful of hearings that judges are calling to be in person, but everybody's wearing masks and the dockets are really small. There's no trials or anything like that happening. Yeah, yeah. So they just postpone the trial forever? Until, until they feel comfortable putting 12 people in a, a jury box together. Yeah, wow. Um, man, so you have been performing this whole time, uh, not, not regularly, of course, but uh, you have been able to do something uh, pretty special in the Ardsley neighborhood of Savannah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that again. Yeah, so I just learned for the first time yesterday that we have, uh, we've been giving a nickname, uh, Harry O'Donohue, Jamie Kina, uh, Rick and I, um, and it was the, we're on 51st Street, and I guess we're called the Fitty One Boys, <laughs> F-I-D-D-Y, Fitty One. Um, and back in, I want to say it was probably, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, upstage you but it was pro probably around march 25th um no it's probably Dang. the beginning of, it's probably the beginning of april that harry decided to do a porch a social distance porch music type thing for people on sundays to get them out of their house lift their spirits a lot of us you know hadn't had any excuse to see daylight in a couple days and hadn't needed to get out of pajamas and all the fun quarantine things. So we all kind of got together and he played and Jamie Kina played. And um, it wasn't until a couple weeks later that the word got out that, hey, Ryan's a musician too. How about we ask him to, to join? So I, you know, I hadn't played in five years since I went to law school. I kind of hung up the guitar and I thought it was <laughs> fun and there's something to be part of and a good way to meet the neighbors. So I started doing that and we every pretty much every Sunday from then until 4th of July, we did a, a music series uh, and it was, it was great. Got to learn, learn some great new songs, got to reconnect with my music. Um, and we've just kind of kept it up since then. That's awesome. Yeah. And I've been there uh, probably, I think five times now. And you mm -hmm. guys just had another concert just this past Sunday. Yeah. Uh, how how was the turnout for that? Just wondering. It was good. It was it was pretty standard. Um, and it, it being cold and it being a little bit rainy, people were good sports about it. But ye yesterday's one was primarily Christmas songs. So that was that was a fun uh, time to learn a bunch of songs that we all grew up listening to that I had no real ever real need to learn up until yesterday and yeah. of course some of those songs are really short you know there's only one verse and one chorus and they just sing it over and over again so we ran out of songs pretty quickly and then just decided to jump in jump onto google and find other christmas songs that we know that we've never actually tried before and just went for it so out of so that you, live yeah so out of that came uh for me um, some some of the more obscure, hilarious Christmas songs that I know, like um, Hippopotamus for Christmas mm. and um, the other one, another kid song, I'm Getting Nothing for Christmas. Do you know that one? Both very good, very good songs. Yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So, so that was fun. <laughs> cool, man. Um, so I heard the last the last session that I went to was probably maybe three weeks ago, it was two or three weeks ago, it was right around Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you performed a song then that you said had, that was like the first public performance of the song, you hadn't performed it before. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that yeah, song I, you just you just released, correct? No, that's a different song. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because no. I, I the one you just released, I know I heard at one of the sessions, but I, I was, was I was thinking it was that one. No, that was the same. You're you're thinking correctly because that last one I did around Thanksgiving, I only played original songs, and that was the song I just released. September was one of them, but then another one that I just wrote that afternoon, I also sang that doesn't even have a title or anything. So I haven't. Oh, okay. I haven't recorded. Okay. That <laughs> 
Well, that was a good one, too. I, I enjoyed September, and I enjoyed the untitled yet to be released, if ever released. I think that was a special for your, your wife, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, was, uh, I, was, I was kind of uh, just feeling down the dumps with um, everything going on, and just kind of getting burnt out of coronavirus and the way of the world right now and election news and all that kind of stuff. So I was pretty, pretty down and she kind of just reminded me to be optimistic. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, it's how great is it when you have, you found somebody in your life that can kind of take you out of yourself and remind you of the, the world outside and the good in people. And so that was what that was about. That's great. So, that the that song is hasn't been released, but September people can find on uh, let's see uh, audio. What is it? oh SoundCloud, right? Yep, yep. SoundCloud. You can listen to it for free. You can download it for free. Um, it's on it's on Spotify. Any of the other music sites that you might listen to. All right, I'm gonna see if I can do this. If I can pull up the link for that and post it into the chat. And guys, if you are watching, that one of you that is watching right now, and if you're Ryan's wife that might be watching <laughs> now, I'm not sure, uh, shout, shout out who you are and let us know. Um, one second here. Ryan, I, I know that you have a, a song that you're going to do for us now. I know it's not September, but um, maybe uh, how, how about, would you like to play? Yeah, absolutely. So I was thinking okay. about doing a, a Christmas song just because we did so many of them yesterday that they've just been on the mind. Awesome. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's Ryan Schmidt and Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him well. Heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. The men, his songs employ. Wild fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. In heaven and nature sing. And in heaven and nature sing. And in heaven and heaven and nature. Nature. Merry Christmas. Awesome. Yeah, Merry Christmas, man. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Uh, I love the way you play with the melody. Yeah, it's 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 one of those songs that I don't know. You can you can make anything just about a folk song, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That singer songwriter style. Um, I was a huge, huge fan when I was younger of uh, James Taylor. I used to listen to James Taylor all the time. Of course. Um, but yeah, I think that's I, I, it. That's kind of the root for me. So I always like focus on that. But um, that's uh, 
sounds sounds so sweet. Sounds so sweet. And I, I hope that sometime soon that more people will get to enjoy your music in, in some way that's comfortable for you, of course, and comfortable for them and everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So beyond that, what's what's next for you? What's what's coming in 2021? Well, um, I've been thinking about because of all this music um, I was playing, I've been thinking about actually giving everything um, a little bit more attention, making that more of my life again. Because when I, I was a songwriter in Nashville for a number of years and between doing that and touring um, mostly on the college circuit, just getting super burnt out on playing these awful shows where there was like five people in a giant auditorium there to see me and um, playing, playing, uh, writing songs and, you know, hearing from publishing and record labels all day. Yeah. We're going to pass. I just got really burnt out on the, the business of it all. And I kind of forgot why I got into music and why I loved it so much. And one of the great things about the porch music series that the neighborhood started up is that I got to kind of refine music on my own terms, um, in a way that was enjoyable, that was safe, that didn't, wasn't associated with any of that shame and uh, pain that the old uh, Ryan Schmidt artist kind of had to deal with. Um, so that, that's been really great. And um, I've been really wanting to, to write, write some more. And I've had this one idea for kicking around forever and I, and I'm finally getting around to giving it a go, but I've always been incredibly fascinated with two different things that um, really didn't didn't merge together in my brain until uh, probably five years ago. But I've always been obsessed with like spaghetti Western films, like the uh-huh. cheesier, cheesier, the better, you know, the, the music, just the, the outrageous characters, just the kind of isolation of it all. Um, that mm. and on the other end, like the apocalypse. I love anything, you know, zombies, whatever, whatever have you, you know, natural disasters, anything. And so I'm just like, I don't know where this is going, but I'm like, I'm, I'm super enthralled. (laughs) Keep going. (laughs) So back, you know, back when I was writing, I wanted to do this, um, concept EP that, that merged those two worlds had a very folky, um, kind of dust bully guitar bluesy type thing and talking about you know a character who's kind of out there in the middle of nowhere in a desert staring at the end of the world and so i wanted to write kind of uh a mini i guess it was like a, a story soundscape type thing and um it wasn't until recently when i was playing around learning some songs and um, oh, all places learning a song uh, from the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Which uh, oh, so great. And it was in drop. Which D. one was that? Man of Constant Sorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you know it's one got the favorites. It's got the really great. I'll drop it into drop yeah. D. Just... The like intro is like the. You know, it's got that like, yeah. Constant sorrow all through my days. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> between. That's one of my favorites. Messing with that, I started kind of playing around with some like. <laughs> kind of like, you know, that kind of thing and started putting some words to it and sussing out. um some actual songs. So I've, I've got a couple songs that I'm working on now that I'm planning on releasing, recording at home and releasing under a name completely different than Ryan Schmidt. Um, just like, a, you know, how, mm. how art sometimes release songs with some fake band name and just, you know, throw it out there in the world. See what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a pretty famous one uh, who came up with a Chris. Oh gosh. What was, what was this? fake name his pseudonym i'm thinking of garth brooks of course oh yeah and, uh, yeah of course yeah and he, he even came up with like he had like prosthetics and a fake goatee and yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. No. No. <laughs> Unless you want to. You know, it's up no, to you, I, really. I, 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 wow, I, I, that sounds that sounds so cool, man. I, I can't wait to uh get hear that formed and uh see it completed. Yeah, so there's that that's Challenge. a little way yeah, that's that's a way off, but um that's yeah. that's my next musical project I hope to to put out there. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Ryan Man, it's so great getting back in touch with you and catching up. Um, I mentioned offline that maybe you know we could we could do like something out here in this new space, this this pub that I have here. I, I um, love it. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to your as people as long as, as I can, can bring some celebration ale. You know, absolutely yeah. celebration ale, uh, creature comfort, whatever. For, oh, Tropicalia is what I'm having here. This okay, is good, good stuff. Um, but yeah, absolutely, let's do it. Love it. Cool. Uh, you have a wonderful Christmas. Uh, happy New Year. Happy Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. Uh, enjoy. Um, and I'll see you guys soon, I'm sure. I, I think there's another porch concert coming up soon, too. I'm sure. I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah. And, and happy all the holidays to you. Festivus. You missed Festivus. <laughs> I miss Festivus. Yeah. And, and I have the poll right here. Gosh, <laughs> what am I thinking? Yeah. Can't forget that. All right. Oh, I'll take Talk care. to you soon, Ryan. Thanks for having okay, me. Okay, bye. Bye. Ryan Schmidt, ladies and gentlemen, uh, wonderful, wonderful person. Um, and I look forward to hearing his EP coming up sometime 2021, 2022. Somewhere in there, he's going to give me a thumbs up. Yeah, he's, he's still backstage in the green area, whatever it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Savannah Performance Project in its current incarnation would not be what it is without my next guest. This person has pushed me forward in a way that no one else could. And uh, they're amazing. They're incredible. As a matter of fact, if I am able to do this, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to, I'm going to pull this up if I can. Uh, literally a year ago, this person told me I should do something. So I, I decided I would. And uh, let's see here if, if I can focus on this. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try. Here we go. Uh, yes, over the shoulder. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't know if you could see that. Let's zoom in. Let's see if I can zoom in. Technology is, is amazing, isn't it? When you can do these things. Yes. Oh, that's too close. I don't like that. <laughs> Seeing all the people. No, that's too close. Sorry. I'm going to zoom out again. Where are we? Yes. Um, one year ago today, I, I had a, a, a Mollyism right there. I don't know if you can read this. It says, Dad, you should make a vlog. I said, I, I said why? And she said, because you're interesting, and which brought me, of course, to tears. So that came up in my Facebook memories just today. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to bring her out with, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Molly Bass. Molly, are you there? Oh, oh. I, I didn't see Molly, you. are you there? I, I, didn't, I didn't see you there. Can you, can you, can you speak? I can't oh. hear you. <laughs> I can't hear her again. She did it to me again. Oh, now oh, I can hear you. Uh, hey, um, I didn't see there. You didn't see me there. Uh, um, well, I see you there. What are you doing? Well, I'm just reading some. I was. I was just. Jim Henson, The Muppet Works. I mean. Oh, the some works. Jim Henson. Oh, that's a wonderful book. Yes. The Works. The Works of Jim Henson. Yeah, and, I, I and noticed your. Um, it looks like you're by a fire. Yes, I have a lovely fire right here. It's very warm and crackling. Yeah, it looks like it is warm and crackling. Um, and you know, you know what I was thinking it, while I was sitting here by the fire. What were you thinking? It looks like you're still thinking. I, <laughs> I think that I'm hearing some very loud music coming from somewhere, and I don't know. 
Oh, really? Interesting. Maybe Is it guitar to... music? Anyways, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking about some of life's unanswered questions. Oh, interesting. Yes. Might I, what? Might I interest you in a theory? Yes, absolutely. I'd love to answer some questions. Okay, we'll wait on the cat. The cat's oh. very important to this whole deal, isn't he? Okay, so while Molly's waiting uh, on, on getting the cat there, uh, I hope you'll notice that Molly's wearing um, some Ralph Lauren uh, Santa attire. Um, that's from the 2020 collection. So. Well, well Chris Bass. Yes. Um, might, I, might I question you? Yes, absolutely. Question, question away. Yes. A person on either side of you. Which armrest do you use? Hmm. There's a person on either side of me, and I want to. I want to know which armrest I use. Which armrest is rightfully yours? Which armrest is rightfully mine? I see. Um. Well, I I believe that the armrest to my dominant arm would be rightfully mine. And I would hope that the person sitting next to me would also have the same dominant arm. So I'm going to go with my right arm. Well, well what if they don't? Well, then typically I will, I will uh, yield to their arm. That's, that's normally what I do in a movie theater. Of course, right now, that would be hard to do because none of us can really uh, gather in movie theaters that, sitting that close together. So I think, you know, I could take any armrest I want, basically, in a movie theater. I see. Well, mm -hmm. I do have another query for you. All right. Let's hear your next query. If you succeed at failing, are you succeeding or are you failing? You're succeeding. Because, because I believe that no one can succeed unless at first they fail. Because we all learn from our failures. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. So every failure is, in fact, a succession? No, that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> a success! Um, this is the last, the last question I have for you today. Chris. All right, query away. Um, yes. Who is your favorite child? Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a favorite girl child and I have a favorite boy child. And I think you, you know which one you are. And it remains still unanswered. <laughs> it does. It definitely does. Um, so we have a little bit of time left because I, I don't see our next guest yet. Um, so, uh, oh, I see you. We've lost the light on you. Um, oh, I'm trying to find more questions. Okay, okay. great. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just going to okay. sit here and I'm, I'm, I'm going to hum along with the music you're playing back there. Might I, might I question you one more time? Okay, give me one more question. I do see that our next guest has now entered the the domicile of have you have you uh, ever whatever. Had, have you ever had bread made for sandwiches? Have I ever had bread made for sandwiches? Made for sandwiches. Yes, I've had bread made for sandwiches many times. My, my I would say it's recreational. Can you? It's definitely a square. Anyways, uh, have you ever had lunch okay. meat? <laughs> yes, I've had lunch meat. Why do I ask you what shape the lunch meat is? One final, ask me one final question, please. What shape is the lunch meat? Round. So why? Well, I can't eat. When the bread is square. 
I'm sorry, you're at your limit of questions. I can answer no more. The Oracle Why? has ceased to oh, answer questions. questions oh, I don't know. I, I think, you know what? I'm just going to bring on our next guest. So maybe he, he can answer that question. Let's see. Jojo. Hello. Everybody, Jojo Ward. Hello, everybody. Everybody's Hi. applauding secretly in their own places. <laughs> Molly, uh, can you ask JoJo that question? Let's see if JoJo has an answer for you. Here's my question. Okay. Why is lunch meat round? Or sandwich meat round? When sandwich bread is square? Because the bread is supposed to cover the entire meat. So the sound is glitching right now. So I did not hear that. Uh, Jojo said, because the bread is supposed to cover the entire meat. And to which I said, ah. Who knows, Molly? Who knows? Ladies and gentlemen, my muse, my inspiration, Molly Bass. Molly, please be careful out there. Don't get burned. Um, don't get too close. Ah, she's on fire, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. The insurance. Yay. <laughs> the insurance alone. JoJo. Chris. That is a, that's a great sweater. It is, isn't it? That's Marilyn. Oh, I love Marilyn. She's one of my favorites, all-time favorites. She's a classic. She is a classic. Um, did you watch the show Smash? Of course I did. Absolutely. All whole two seasons of it. It the whole all two seasons of it. It was yeah. it was a very good a very good show. I enjoyed it very much. Um, I was obsessed. And it was before its time. It was before its time. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. It was. If it was out now, people would like be drawn to it. Um Oh, absolutely. They'd be all over it, especially if it was uh broadcasted on Netflix instead of NBC. Exactly. I mean, streaming, it's the way things are. Although, I do enjoy Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. That I have not watched yet. My parents are all over it, but that I have not personally watched. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's the parents that are watching it, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those. It's on my list. It's Ugh. on my list. And speaking of parents, you just moved out of your parents' house, correct? I did. I did. It's such a good feeling. Yeah, that's amazing. And <laughs> and you actually told me that you just got internet. Ladies and gentlemen, he would not be able to yeah. be on the show without that fact. So nope. thank you, internet companies. Who, who is your internet thank company you. of choice, JoJo? Thank you, Xfinity. Thank you. <laughs> Xfinity. This is not an ad for Xfinity by any means. Um, it if it was, not. maybe they would... Maybe they would pay JoJo and I some money. That would be great. Right. Uh, JoJo, it's been a while. Yes, I know, it right? I, I need I need more sponsors. Exactly. Um, it, yeah, it has been a while. The last time I believe we saw each other in person, we were in the middle of rehearsal. Uh, no, the last time we saw each oh, other wait. in person was uh, with the camps. Oh, true. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the summer camps at the Savannah Children's Theater. Um, mm-hmm. Before that, though, <laughs> yes, before, before that, that, the last time was we were in rehearsal for uh, Susical. You, of course, uh, were I was Captain Cat. Cat. Yes. Cat and Hat. Thank you. I was so excited. We, I know. I just I was wanted too. to be I was the mayor. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to be that's... lapping up milk next to the mayor on stage. That's it. That's all I wanted. And a big Wait, giant did we already hat. Did we already stage that when you were lapping up milk? We didn't get to that part, but we were definitely okay. on stage at the same time. Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Even though uh, in the perspective of the mind's eye, I was much smaller than you. Um Although I think the cat does jump into the world of the Who's from time he to does. time he because does. he's he that special. 
back and forth through everything. He's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So just for those people watching, the Savannah Children's Theater had planned on doing Susical the Musical in uh, June-ish time frame. Mm -hmm. That was their big summer production. And of course, that all had to end. We, I, I, I remember we still had hope that it was, it was still going to happen, like even as COVID was, yeah. was ramping up and we were not able to go anywhere. We were like, yeah, it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen. But then, yeah, eventually they just had to call it and say, we can't do this, which understandable. But uh, you and I, I we hope. were both... Yeah, uh, we were both disappointed. And yes, we still have hope that they'll bring it back when they can, when it's possible. Because you can't do that show without an audience. You cannot. No, and you can't do that show without a big cast either. Right. And that was my favorite and part. And we did have a big cast. We had... Huge. Huge. <laughs> Uh oh, I went away for a second. Did you go away? I did not. I'm still here. Okay. Uh, I think people in my house are streaming things right now, and it's causing issues with my own interests. Uh, I have well. no issues with that, thanks to Xfinity Internet. Yes. We also have Xfinity Internet, but it doesn't work as well <laughs> when you have eight people using it. Jerks. Understood. My wife, Understood. I mean, yeah, uh, Molly still hasn't brought me back my phone or I would increase our speed. Um, so I blame her. Anyway, so uh, what have you been up to lately? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, it's been a crazy ride with this whole COVID virus thing. Um, mm -hmm. I never thought things would get so crazy to where, you know, we would have to shut down. But back in, you know, March, April, they sure did. They absolutely did. Um, and then, well, as you know, I was doing uh, dance fitness classes at Habersham YMCA. Those also took a pause. And then we also, um, you know, we also uh, were doing virtual shows at the club for a long time, too. And I didn't really take too much part in that because it's it's a different feeling whenever you are performing for a camera versus performing for a live audience. And of course, you know, there are things that as an entertainer, you need to be able to adapt to both on stage and on camera. Cause you know, there's gonna be audio by the way. Um, so it's, it was really challenging to like see the drastic differences and, you know, being a camp counselor at the Savannah Children's Theater, you got to see how the children quickly had to adapt to having an audience versus to a camera. So then it was kind of like, oh, well, if they can do it, I guess so can I as an adult, right? Um, yeah. And then as little by little, we started virtual classes at the YMCA. Then we eventually expanded to, um, you know, uh, in-person classes. And we have a capacity of how many people can be in the room which is still a pretty good number. And I mean, if you're filling up the classes, you're doing a good job. So we're doing a great job. Um, a lot of people have canceled the memberships and we understand that it's not a good time for a lot of people right now, but we're okay with that. And um, the good thing about the YMCA is that they offer like so many different, um, I guess you wanna say like enrollment prices, like depending on your income, you can have a certain amount of, of membership to pay per month. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, now, as far as Club One, I think we opened up back in, I wanna say maybe late April or May. Definitely something around then because uh, Trela and I of the Club One Cabaret were doing the Broadway Sing Along Lives on Facebook Live under the Club One page. And that was mm -hmm. tons of fun. And you would be awfully surprised how you plan yeah. to do an event like once a week and you're like, oh, crap, I really don't know all the words to these songs like I thought I did, you know? Um, so <laughs> there was a lot of quick preparation going into those shows. I remember we would go shopping the day of because we would give out gifts in every show. 
Meanwhile, it's like, okay, let's go to rehearsal. Like we've got to rehearse. We have two hours to rehearse these songs and the duets and to get the harmonies perfect or as close to perfect as possible. Um, so it was a big trek, but we sure did it. And then eventually after the club opened, we were able to produce a live Broadway sing-along show, which was a great show. We plan on doing that again uh, in the future. I think the gossip date right now is going to be in February, so I've heard. Okay, I'm 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 playing with my sound right now because you were coming in and out, but you sound good now. I apologize. Okay, but I, I <laughs> know that everybody heard what you were talking about. It was just me that couldn't hear it. I know Club One, and I know you had shows, and I know you were doing them on Facebook, <laughs> and you I were was. doing with, with Trailer Trailer. What's the last name of Trailer? So Trailer Trash. <laughs> Tra trailer Trash. Okay, that makes sense. And you would be mm -hmm. Carmen Eye Candy? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, awesome, awesome. So <laughs> among those performances, uh, your, your Broadway performances, what was your favorite song to sing? Oh, man. You know, I didn't think that this moment uh, was going to come for me because, you know, uh, you think about, like, what shows would I actually or what characters would I actually play in mm -hmm. this certain show? And then it's like kind of as um, your drag persona, you can flip the script and change everything. Um, you can change your gender, you can change whatever character you wanna play. And the good thing about drag is you can change your look. So literally you can make whatever possibilities happen. So my favorite song, mm, it's, uh, Kind of, it's kind of a tie. I got to admit, it's kind of a tie. Um, we did a Disney theme night and Poor Unfortunate Souls was definitely a banger. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, I would yeah. love to play Ursula at any point in time. One day, uh -huh. it would be amazing. And Wait, then, did you audition for Ursula when the Children's Theater? No, I did not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did not. Uh, yeah. It would it would have been a good time, but I I give my props to Laura Keena Wild. You know, she oh my god, she's amazing. Well. Yes. I can, everything that girl touches turns to gold, and I can't keep up with her yet. Yet, yeah. yet, yeah. Um, yeah. exactly. Tied up with poor unfortunate souls would have to be, and I am telling you from Dream Girls, I did mm. not think that I would have what it takes uh, to pull off that song. But um, at some point in a performance world, you just let go and you just let it happen. And that's what's so great about performing is that there's all these endless possibilities to everything with not only how you look, but if you just, um, as they say, give it to God and let him handle mm -hmm. it, then you can end up with something completely great, something completely hilarious, everything. But um, I did not think that I had what it take, uh, took to uh, perform that song. But as I just let it go, I just let it flow. And I thought when I was done, I was like, oh, OK, I did it. You know, that was great. And then, um, of course, we have our production crew with us so helpful with everything. They were just like, Carmen, that was amazing. And I had my little my little heart blushed and Marilyn smiled and everything was better and felt like <laughs> I think you just got a heart. Somebody just gave us a heart right now. So they, they, they're there with you, the people watching. Um, so this is something I haven't ever thought of. Um, but at what point in your life did you know that you loved drag? <clears throat> so uh, the point in my life that I knew that I loved drag, that is such a specific question. Well, so I would say I would sense that you you got into it because you were interested in it, but there was a point when you started doing it, and you're like, "Oh my God, this is amazing." Mm -hmm. Well, I was definitely inspired first because um, I worked at Club One before becoming an entertainer. I was actually the mm -hmm. DJ, and they say, you know, if you can't do drag, then you should DJ the shows first. Uh, that's not what they say. But yeah. it's definitely a good stepping stone. 
Um, so I saw what all it took, like, you know, all the time, all the money that you put into it from the girls who were already performing. And, you know, mm -hmm. they give you such great advice. Uh, being a part of the Club One Cabaret is definitely a good place to form a family, really, with this specific art form um, and in the performance community in general, because we host all kinds of shows there. But um, I was definitely inspired by them. Then I remember when I went to Armstrong State University here in Savannah, Georgia, they always talked about producing a drag show for um, the students. Cause you know, they're young, they don't get to go to clubs at all. Why not give them a little taste of the nightlife um, mm -hmm. legally, you know? So uh, I believe it was either 2014 or 15. I can't remember for the love of God, why? But uh, one of those years, we finally put together the first um, Armstrong Gay Straight Alliance drag show, and it was a fundraiser for the organization. It was a hit. We were outside, um, so you know, in the in the springtime too. So it was becoming summer. You know, all the gnats were out there, and we had to change outside. We had to do everything. But that lawn was packed. You could literally see. Um, from McDonald's over there by Savannah Mall, you could mm -hmm. literally see all of the people in that lawn of the bursar's office. And so that was kind of how um, things started. And I remember saying to my two closest friends backstage, I was like, you guys, I have never felt so close to you than I do right now. Uh -huh. And so I think that that kind of sparked up everything and the excitement and the creativity of what this actual um, art form of drag is and what it can be for a lot of people. Wow. And so you look back and you see all the performances that you've had in a drag show and in a cabaret. And how much of that influenced your role as Mrs. Trunchbull? <laughs> um, huh. Well, had you thought of that yet? <laughs> I have, I have. I knew that automatically when I got the email saying that I was uh, chosen for the role of Trunchbull, how I wanted to differentiate the two. Because mm -hmm. while Carmen Eye Candy literally goes for the eye candy persona and tries to make things pretty eye catching, hence the term eye candy, you know, glorious. Whereas Trunchbull is the exact opposite. She is mean. She's ugly. She's nasty. She's hideous. Hideous. <laughs> she's hideous. She's butch, very tomboy. Um, mm -hmm. She is literally everything that JoJo is not and that Carmen yeah. is not. Um, yeah. So I definitely knew that if I could look at that person and be uncomfortable, that that was what I was going for. I yeah. wanted people, I wanted people to think that I was ugly. Um, but so I just kind of took the characteristics from Carmen and switched it around and shabba yeah, that's what happened. Man, I wish, okay, so I do have a picture of you as... As Trunchbull, um, you do not. Yes, <laughs> yeah, of course I do. Of course I do. You know I do because it's uh, right. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Hang on. Uh, do... do. There it is. Wait, we'll do it this way. Is, is it that one? Is it that one? Is that no, no, that's the wrong one. Sorry. No. Oh Sorry my god. Everybody close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes until I get it right. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try one more time. Uh do do share screen. Yeah, that's the one I want, but it's not the one I want. Oh, this is the one I want. Okay. I think I got it now. Yeah, ah, there it is. The one. <laughs> Still my yes. profile picture to this day. Yes. Uh, and there's great reason why. That was, I, I, I swear, that was just a, uh, it was a triumph, that performance, um, I, I feel. Um, it was one of my favorite, favorite things that I've seen you do on stage. And we've, we've been on stage a number of times together, but that by far is just, it, it, it great moments of joy for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was really yeah. excited to play that role. Very excited. Um, I made sure that I showed up for that audition. That is for sure. I'm <laughs> sure of that. 
yeah. Um, yeah. It was it was it was a um, a tricky situation. It was very tricky. Yeah, you had a bunch of stuff going on, right? Don't I always, Chris? Don't I always? <laughs> <laughs> Literally juggle like five times, five things all the time. But yeah. um, I remember that specific night that I went to go audition, I was um, already working on choreography for Rocky Horror Picture Show at the Bay Street right. Theater. Yeah. And so I was doing that, and we just had auditions. And I was like, but Matilda's coming up. Yeah. And I got to go to that audition. I have to. So yeah. I literally, as soon as we finished auditions with Rocky Horror for that night, I called the front office. Renee was like, hey, um, yeah, you can come on over. I mean, it doesn't matter that it's like, you know, nine o'clock, nine thirty. It doesn't matter. Just come on over. So I went over there. I booked it over there and I wanted that role. I wanted to <laughs> fight for that role. <laughs> Goodness. But it was, it's trunchable is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. She is a big lady, which means that she puts on an even bigger show. And mm -hmm. I commend the actors who played it on Broadway. You know, um, of course, whenever you get a role, sometimes people like to do a lot of research. I don't really like to do that too much. I just kind of like to go off of what I already know, for example, mm -hmm. the movie, and then yeah. take inspiration from, um, from there, that resource. And then just kind of developing it into um, a little sprinkle of JoJo's flair too, and mixing that up and spitting it out at the audience. Yeah, I think probably some of the best performances that I've seen has always been that person. You, you can see that person, uh, a piece of them in every part of that role, even if it's something totally outside of who they are, like Trench Bowl would be. Um, that's usually the best performance. You, if you center it on yourself, um, I think. I think that's true. I think that's true. That's yeah. a certain school of, of acting, I'm sure. Yeah. Comment yeah. on that. Everybody's got their own, you know, techniques that they use. And it's always good to try somebody else's technique just to give it a shot. If it doesn't work out, move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would definitely say Matilda was one of my favorite shows to be in, for sure. Um, even though your character killed me at some point, even though you don't see it happen, it happened. I know that it was not my intention to do so at all <laughs> whatsoever. Um, but I did, I did, um, I did uh, do a lot of bad things to a lot of people. Um, now, for me, I carry some of that baggage with me if I'm playing like a bad character. I carry it with me when I walk off stage. Did you find that true with Trunch Bowl as well? Uh, you mean like the the anger of Trunch Bowl? Yeah, the anger of just like. Not just that, just like the conflict in your brain of who you are on stage and who you are in reality. Yes, I know that I definitely um, looked at myself after that because um, being involved with Susical right after, you know, kids were still looking, but they know you as Trunchbull. They've never right. seen you as JoJo before, right? So they're yeah. all walking around the theater and you like walk right next to them. <laughs> <laughs> So I definitely changed like my whole persona after Matilda to make people like me again. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Because yeah. ugh, trench bowl. Oh, oh. She is a meanie greedy. Mean, mean person. But she's well, worth it. She's what? She's worth it. <laughs> she's worth it. Well worth it. Yes, the show was well worth it. That was a I felt like it was a well-received show because of the fact that we loved doing it so much. And I, I feel like everyone on that stage was really there for that show. It, it was a really yeah. happy show. And I mean, by the time you get there, how many times have you done a show where um, a community theater show where it's just like, oh, I love doing this show so much. Like everybody's excited. We're coming to work. We're ready. We're, we know how the show ends and we know that the audience is going to love it because we've just worked on it for so long. And uh, I mean, you know, you try to create that experience with every show, but nothing compares to Matilda still now. I mean, you I have a lot of great feelings with a lot of shows and a lot of castmates, but Matilda by far is the one that I felt like closest to the cast, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a very close cast. I, I felt I felt that way too. 
Um, so Jojo, what's next? What is next? Well, what's 2020, 2020, 2021, 2021 looking like? 2021. Um, that's a very good question. You know, of course, things are still up in the air with because um, you uh, we were told that it was going to get pretty bad in December with the whole COVID-19 thing happening again. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Um, but what's next is I've really been diving into Carmen Eye Candy lately. I've been investing in her a lot. Um, I'm even kind of taking a little break from the dance fitness world just because um, it's easy to exhaust yourself when you're performing all the time. And then when you're doing dance fitness, you're performing and educating somebody how to do something at the same time. Um, so what's next is, I guess, uh, I may be putting a little audition together for a, a TV show that people know about in America and internationally. So I'm working on something right now. Uh, so we'll we'll see how that goes. It's always a trek to put together an audition tape for uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, but we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. but I will continue to dive into Carmen Eye Candy. She's definitely somebody that I know and that I trust and that I love and that people love too. Um, and I want to continue that. I want to dive into more theater as well. I think I would love to prove a point that you can be a hardworking performer in Savannah, Georgia and be able to make a living. Um, a lot of people would not support that argument, but I think that you can definitely make it happen. Maybe with not one, um, one opportunity in itself, but with multiple opportunities that you can make mm -hmm. a living as a performer in Savannah, Georgia. So I definitely want to do that. I know there's been talk about some things coming up at the Savannah Children's Theater too, and I'm really excited to look into that as well. Um, nothing set in stone right now, but right. The, the, all, um, the good thing is that I can always come back and keep you updated um, yeah. because I've got Xfinity Wi-Fi. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, so my microphone. So we do a little thing at the end of this. Actually, uh, real quick. Uh, so Club One, they can find you at Club One? Yes, you can uh, find me at the Club One Cabaret. You can also find me on Facebook right now under social media. Uh, my name is Jojo Ward. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram. I'm on there as well as Jojo Ward and then Carmen Eye Candy on there as well. Carman is spelled C-A-R-M-A-N because I'm a man in a dress and <laughs> I can be spelled like an iPhone because how else would you spell it nowadays with 2020? Yeah. Um, so you can find me on there and you can even find me on TikTok every now and then. Excellent. Yeah. I'm not into the TikTok yet. My daughter's trying to get me into it, but I, I can't, I can't figure it out. It's addicting. It takes a yeah. lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to like cater or uh, curate your stuff, right? It's yeah. It's, it's a lot of setup. Even when we did um, the October looks, the makeup looks with everything that we did for October, that was wild. It took yeah. so much Time, money, preparation, and energy. Tons of energy. All awesome. through a phone screen. Everything. All, all through a phone screen, yeah. yeah. All, all Are we about screen. to play a game? Is that what this is? The game? Oh, do we have a game? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we do have a little thing that I do at the end of every ep episode, whatever you want to call it, and that is sitcom freeze. Are you ready for this? Oh, man. I, I hope so. I really okay. hope. Okay, so the situation on, on this week's episode is that a panda has gotten loose in the zoo and the bakery next door has a new employee. So those two things are happening at the same time. You, you make of it what you will, but on the count of three, you have to react to that situation. So Jojo Ward, thank you for being on our show. Three, two, one, sitcom freeze. Oh my God.